Let's talk about stoichiometry and what it represents. So as we look at a balanced equation of any kind, such as this one right here, what we're looking at is a representation of the ratio of different um, materials and how they react with each other, which is to say that what this is telling us is that for every two potassium chlorides, two potassium chlorides and three oxygen molecules are produced. This is a ratio um, which in a sense is of individual molecules. Two of these makes two of these and three of these, but in another sense can also be taken as moles because after all, two of these molecules are formula units, makes two of these and three of these. But since that's really hard to count, you can say that two of these, since two of these makes two of these, twice as many of these would make twice as many of these, a dozen of the two dozen of these and make two dozen of these, or two moles of these and make two moles of these and three moles of these. And so we can use moles when looking at balanced equations in terms of a, a way of looking at how the relationship between the quantities of things consumed or produced. So we can guide that, or we can use that as a guiding principle toward understanding the whole point of stoichiometry, which is where if you're given the quantity of one thing in the calculation, in the equation, you should be able to predict how much is either consumed or produced of some other thing. So looking at that here, this is saying if we have 1.65 moles of potassium chlorate to start with, how many moles of oxygen are produced? Well, we know that for every two moles consumed, three moles of oxygen are produced, and so what we do is we set it up this way, where it's similar to another way of setting up a similar sort of thing like this would be 1.65 moles of KClO3 times convergent factor with moles of O2 moles of KClO3 equals moles of O2. Uh, this would be similar to this, and so being that they represent the same thing, I will use this way of representing it. So we're saying it's this times this divided by this equals this. And just as always, we notice moles of potassium chlorate will cancel moles of potassium chlorate to leave moles of oxygen as the answer. We then proceed to take the given, put it here at the beginning. These rep are coming from the balanced equation. It tells us the ratio between the substances involved. So this two next to the, or this uh, three next to the O2 means we put a three right here. This two next to the potassium chloride means we put a two right here. This says that if you want to go from moles of potassium chloride to moles of oxygen, we have to take into account that there is a two to three ratio. So this allows us to go from moles of potassium chloride to moles of oxygen. And then in order to get the moles of oxygen, you simply take this times this divided by this will equal this. And the actual way that looks on the calculator is 1.65 times 3 divided by 2, 2.48 moles of O2. Why is that rounded? It's because three sig figs here demands three sig figs here. So again, this is made possible by the units, moles of potassium chloride canceling moles of potassium chloride. These will not cancel and cannot cancel because this is moles of oxygen, which is different from moles of potassium chloride. The same thing applies to these other things. If you want to take, if you have this many moles of potassium chloride and you want to know how many moles of this are going to be consumed, you make sure that since it's asking how many moles of potassium chloride, you make sure that's in your answer. You take your given, that's why it's here. So that's the reason why you are going to be setting it up with the given at the beginning the thing you want at the end, and then what goes in the middle is you want to make sure moles of KCl cancel with here versus here so that it doesn't wind up in the final answer, and you want to put moles of potassium chlorate on top so that you can ensure that it will be in the answer. So we just take these numbers right out of the balanced equation. This two comes is next to the KCl, so it goes right there next to the KCl. Um, how many moles of KCl are three? This number right here, two. So what it's telling us to do is take this times two divided by two, which if you do that, 3.5 times 3.50 times two divided by two, you wind up with the exact same number again. That's why the answer would be that many moles produced from that many moles that you started with. Um, how many moles of KCl be formed with 2.73 moles of potassium chloride? So you take your given 2.73 moles of potassium chlorate. CLO3, oops, KClO3, whoops. And then, um, messy, but I guess you get the idea, KClO3. 
and then the answer is moles of KCl because it's asking how many moles are made, so that's that right there. And then what you do is make sure that moles of KClO3 is there so that it cancels with that. Make sure moles of KCl is here so that it winds up on top. Uh, you take the numbers right out of the balanced equation, moles of KCl. There's a 2 next to it, so I put the 2 right here. There's a, next to the KCl3 as a 2, so I put the 2 right here. Let's make sure that 2 is nice and visible. 2.73 times 2 divided by 2 gives the exact same number of 2.73 as your answer for how many moles of potassium chloride are produced. The rest of these all do follow the same sort of idea. Um, different a different um, equation means you'll use different numbers in the conversion factors, but it's like what's going to work the same here. We can look at this, for example. Um, how many moles of Fe2O3 are produced? That's why this is here, because it's asking how many are produced. 2.75 moles of iron is given, so 2.275 moles of iron is given. So um, we put moles of Fe here so it can cancel with this. We put moles of Fe2O3 up top so that it comes out in the final answer. Let's see, there's a 2 next to this, so we put that 2 right there. There is a 4 next to Fe, so we have 4 moles of iron. So this times 2 divided by 4. Essentially, it's like dividing by 2, but yeah, whatever, I'll put the whole process here. 0.275 times 2 divided by 4. 0.1375, so 0 0.1375. How many sig figs? 3 sig figs. All right, around this to 3 sig figs. 0.1375. 3.8 moles of iron 3 oxide are produced. So you can see that's the pattern that's going to go for all of these. Let's just give a quick introduction to what if instead of moles, it asks for this bit about grams. So be aware that this is a mole to mole ratio, not a gram to gram ratio. So while it's true that two moles of this makes two moles of this, or two moles of this makes three moles of this, it is not true that two grams of this makes three grams of this because they have different molar masses. So this is the process you have to do for that. You have to write down your given right here. And since it's only a mole-mole relationship, you have to convert this to moles. So that's this first step here. This is the molar mass of potassium chlorate. This is the conversion from grams of potassium chlorate to moles of potassium chlorate. Then, once you have moles of potassium chlorate, you can convert from moles of potassium chlorate, there's a 2 next to it in the equation, to moles of what you're being asked for. So you're being asked for oxygen. There's a 3 next to it, so that's a 3 moles of oxygen. And then, it didn't ask for moles of oxygen, it asked for grams of oxygen, so we need to take that moles of oxygen and convert to grams. So this is the molar mass for oxygen. We set it up so that moles cancel moles to give grams in the final answer, where 1 mole of O2 has a mass of 32.00 grams. The periodic table for oxygen, of course, shows 15.9994, essentially 16, but with a form of O2, that means 2 times this, which is 32.00 grams per mole. So, so what are we looking at? Just as a quick review, take your grams, convert to moles using the molar mass, convert from moles of what you're given to moles of what you're trying to find, and then take moles of what you're trying to find and convert to grams of what you're trying to find. And then the actual calculation for that is going to be 3.76 times 122 point, whoops, sorry, divided by 122.55 times 3 divided by 2 times 32, 1.47 grams of oxygen, three sig figs because of this number right here three sig figs. No matter what you do, you're going to do the same thing. Let's look at this blank one here. How many grams of oxygen are needed to react with 125 grams of iron? Well, make sure grams of oxygen are there as part of your answer. 125 grams of iron here is what you start with. You will convert from grams of iron to moles of iron, and then from moles of iron to moles of oxygen because you're trying to solve for oxygen. And then from moles of oxygen, you'll convert to grams of oxygen. That's how you're going to get grams to your final answer. From grams to moles of what you're given, from moles of what you're given to moles of what you want, from moles of what you want to grams of what you want. That's how this goes. So we just fill in the blanks. Uh, the mass 
What's the relationship between grams of iron and moles of iron? One mole of iron has a mass of 55.85 grams. So 55.85 grams per mole, that's the molar mass. For oxygen, one mole of O2 is 32.00 grams. Here, we take this out of the balanced equation. So there's a four next to the iron, we put a four right here. There's a three next to the O2, we put a three right here. Thus, we are going to take, let's see, ah, there we go, get it all in view. Uh, yeah, okay, perfect. 125 divided by this times that divided by that times that. Divided by 55.85 times 3 divided by 4 times 32 gives 53 point, how many do we need? 3 sig figs, 4 infinite, 4 sig figs, okay, 3 sig figs it is. 53.7 grams of oxygen. Now on the actual test, of course, you'd want to box your answer. I suppose I should technically do that here too. Uh, actually, I should include the units in that answer. Oops, units and chemical identity. But that's essentially how you would go about dealing with something that gives you grams of one thing and asks you how many grams of the other thing. And it doesn't matter what it is. Any two things in the reaction, the same process is gonna work. So I could have been asked, given 125 grams of oxygen, it asked me how many grams of oxygen. It could have also asked me how many grams of this. I would have used the exact same process. If it asked me for this, I just would have put Fe2O3 instead of this, and the molar mass that's appropriate for Fe2O3, and such and so forth. So that is a quick overview of the basics of how stoichiometry works. Hope that helps. Happy studies.